Hello and welcome back to Groundworks. This is episode 6 in the Remote Tech series. This is not exactly a guide per se, but it will be more than a mission just playing with Remote Tech. And it will be going to Duna. As you can see, the craft consists of the one rover and one satellite that will be launching in Duna's orbit, marked Explorer 1. So, if we look at in the VAB, um, I will now quickly take off the fairing to better show off the craft. The sheer volume of the launch vessel is a little bit over-engineered, but that's the Kerbal way, I guess. So, um, this is the transfer stage, and it consists of rover and, uh, and uh, satellite mounted on an, essentially what it is a big fuel rocket with a nuclear engine. So now if we take those away, we are left with satellite and rover. As you can see from the bottom, rover has also some small engines to help it with its deorbit burn. And it has a se separatron, so it can get separated from the actual, uh, from the actual satellite. Now, I have installed a uh, raster prop monitor and I will be using probe control room and what you can see in front of the rover are the cameras that I will be using once landed on Duna. Okay, and um, also uh, this rover was assembled using the Infernal Robotics mod uh, and I'm using Rover Dude's um, deployable airbags which you can see uh, above and beyond on the sides of the rover with wheels. Hopefully the idea is that those airbags will uh, soften up the blow of the landing and enable the rover to go on further. So, and the satellite is nothing special, it's just a regular satellite what we put in orbit. But we would need it to relay the signal if we didn't have the, set, the remote tech satellites already. And as you can see, this is what the the satellite and the rover look extended uh, when we put them on Infernal Robotics. Okay now, now let us proceed to launch. So I will be showing most of the launch and getting into orbit in an accelerated, time accelerated manner. You've seen me done a couple of times and everybody knows I'm not the best when it comes to optimal um, angles, optimal ascent, I'm just, it's just a means of to an end to get the whole transfer stage up in the orbit and ready to go to Duna. So nothing really sp spectacular here. The only thing that you have to keep in mind when playing with remote tech, since this is a completely unmanned mission, I have a reflectron uh, antenna to ensure that I'm maintaining connection to the Kerbal Space Program, Kerbal Space Center. So, de detaching the boosters and burning for the apoapsis. Pitching ever so slightly and trying to get it up to snuff now. Okay cutting the engines and now we will just coast to the apoapsis and in the meantime I can prepare the maneuver node. By the way what you see to the right side, side is the precise node plugin which I'm using for more precise control over my maneuver nodes. Pitching down and Fairing separation successful, burning for orbit. Yeah, as you can see, pretty much, it's n I didn't really need all that fuel f to actually launch the ship into the orbit, but this is not looking for the optimal solution, but getting it, but rather getting things done. And I also wanted the whole transfer stage in the fairing itself, just for, I guess, packaging reasons. So, we are nearly completed with our 
orbit burn and we are now in orbit just wrapping it up a little bit and the next thing to happen is then setting up we would need to extend the, the solar panels on the craft to ensure that we have a little bit of electricity and first things first extending the antenna to make sure that we don't lose control shortly when we get it out of the range of the smaller reflectron antenna so and while I'm here I'm already deploying most of the antennas because later when we leave Kerbin uh, it's very easy because you're focusing on your burns and everything so it's very easy to forget about deploying the antennas and then what happens your craft is basically dead stick so now setting Duna as a target and we should be pretty much optimal to launch um, the transfer window to Duna should be optimal more or less maybe plus minus one orbit so now I'm setting up a maneuver node for the ejection let's see what it looks like and it's fairly close so a little bit of fiddling to make sure that we have an encounter and yeah that's good enough for me okay time to go to the actual burn as you can see this some parts of this mission take quite a long to actually execute and that's why some of the parts are being you don't have to watch everything through it uh, so I'm running it at time accelerated manner and now we're burning for the transfer to Duna it's a somewhat longer burn but thankfully with this powerful engine that we still have from the ascent stage it takes a lot less than it would if I was to use the nuclear engine one and yeah the nuclear engine will still be a lot useful for corrections setting up re-entry to Duna and also um, setting up the desired orbit to deploy the satellite and the rover so without further ado let us just kill the maneuver node and see what how do we look like when it comes to Duna we do Duna satellite network is working correctly as we can see and yes uh, let us now said, say goodbye to Kerbin it will be a while until we oh this craft actually won't make it back this is one way trip so we can appreciate the horizon as we depart from Kerbin and watch Moon and Minmus dance in its around its orbit almost leaving the Kerbin sphere of influence and all right now let's see what the Duna encounter looks like fiddling a little bit with the precise note to make sure that we come as close as possible because all the burns here are basically very simple and here when I was separating the transfer stage I encountered some actually weird bug um, I guess it has something to do with uh, the torque I'm not exactly sure what it was related but eventually I have gotten it under control and um, I'm now deploying my solar panels to ensure that we have enough power and as you can see antennas we have deployed in the previous while still we were still in carbon orbit and now just accelerating to the actual maneuver node doing the correction burn and let's see what it looks like good enough 
and we're going back now going to Duna. So when we come to Duna I want to set up a maneuver node to basically get captured in the Duna's orbit and I will not be using the arrow braking since I'm playing with time delay and uh, it can get very very difficult with such small and fiddly craft to do actual to do the actual um, arrow brake maneuver so I decided and I have plenty of Delta V in the craft so I decided to go for the regular burn instead as ordered by the flight computer you can appreciate the Duna coming in and coming pretty close to the actual burn, we are letting the autopilot align. So things when playing with the remote tech um, flight computer, you have to plan all the maneuvers beforehand, and this is especially important around Duna because your time delay can be anywhere between 60 seconds and two two and a half minutes. So it gets very very hard to make corrections if you screw up. So you have to be really, really careful. Here now we're burning for the Duna capture. And I'm showing most of this stuff uh, time accelerated because the in interesting stuff would be deploying of the rover and of the satellite. You have seen me going to Duna several times before, so it's nothing really particularly new here. Alright, now, let's see, so this is the orbit, and in the apoapsis I will do, um, I have also encountered the same bug with the torque when I was trying to deploy the rover, so, uh, and it, is, it has something to do with, uh, I guess, the probe not having um, the reaction wheels, so the other reaction wheels were applying. So instead of just deploying and using um, rover's engine to deorbit, I will deorbit the whole transfer stage, deploy the rover and then burn again to reachieve orbit, because uh, yeah, it's basically a work around the bug that, we, that I have encountered. Not sure why it exactly happens, but yeah. By the way, with this is still being playing at 0 0.24.2, so this is not 0.90, I would be... Or is it? Yeah. No, I think this is 0.24.2. I have several installs, so it gets... Those get mixed up sometimes. Now, uh, let's see. Or it could be the 090, maybe. Okay, let's see now. Uh, doing the deorbit burn shortly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I have start, start to stage the separation and also putting up the um, preparing the rover basically for a descent. Getting everything to line up. Alright, we're at the maneuver node. doing the burn and I think we should be good to go when it comes to the rover. Yes, we have deployed, as you can see I have deployed the airbags from the, and I'm just here quickly dropping a quick save, well because of the Kraken, so to say, um, and uh, yeah, 
So now I'm preparing the rover for a descent. Uh, here again when playing with the remote tech it's very important to do everything beforehand but before we go to the actual let me see yeah okay so now uh, what I'm doing is I'm I have checked in the map view how long does it take for the rover to come to the periapsis I have roughly doubled that time or a little bit more and I have now I'm preparing to do the the actions that will take place after the rover has actually landed on Duna. So that's why you see me manually putting up a uh, significantly longer wait time and giving a command for the actual antenna to deploy. So the plan is that that antenna should hopefully deploy once the rover has already landed on Duna. Uh, and this is the reason why you would need actually two antennas, because you need one antenna to deploy once you're down on the Duna and another to send that command over. So just having one antenna will not cut it. So you have to be really careful. And that's why it's convenient that I'm using the satellite network around Duna because then I can use Omni antennas. I don't have to bother and think about uh, the actual targeting, who am I targeting, what is my communication dish pointing to, etc. etc. Makes the whole exploration a lot easier. So, um, one thing that I also want to make sure that it's ready uh, is the actual parachutes. So I have prepared the parachutes uh, to be deployed once in the orbit around Duna and they have a pressure deployment. They are preset for Duna. Um, I have done this before and you can actually land also on the rover wheels but uh, since I have no good measure on how much the craft weighs uh, last time it happened to me on the test run that the one of the rover wheels actually broke. So even though I came down on Duna until something got, uh, until a, a Kerbal gets down there, my rover would be unusable. So this is why I have decided to use the actual airbags to soften up the blow. And now I'm just uh, uh, retracting uh, the infernal robotics pylons because the smaller profile we get on landed on landing it will be easier to actually land and not flip over so ideally I want the uh, wheels extended a little bit so once I land my rover doesn't flip over but not too much extended because if it's too much extended then the force at which will hit will be hard and also it might not hit at the right angles, meaning that it could hit the front first or the back first and this wouldn't be then ideal. So that's why I'm trying to look for a sweet spot. And now I'm just making sure that once again double checking for the antenna. As you can see me now saying OK. Time delay and activate the antenna and then I will put also make sure that I am put a less time delay and I make sure that I'm arming the parachutes so that they activate and also putting some other time delay for this other antenna to actually close because if we come into the orbit while still having deployed antenna it will snap and break off. I mean, we do have the re Reflectron small short-range antennas, but given we have no satellites in that near orbit, those wouldn't be too useful if the main antenna breaks. And now I'm just trying to point the actual rover um, in the other direction. And now comes the fun part. Uh, fun part when the antenna is retracted you can basically do nothing but sit and watch and hope that you have set everything correctly. As I said timing delay of 60 seconds makes everything a lot harder because rather than just directly controlling you have to plan in advance. And my parachutes have deployed and I'm a little bit concerned because my rover is flipped upside down but once we get to the actual 
atmosphere and when the, the shoots deploy it should be much simpler and I also retracted the wheels. This is the probe control room which I found to be extremely cool if you want to play with, uh, with the probes but uh, later I realized since I'm using timing delay I won't be able to manually control the rover on Duna's surface. So I'll probably save that for some other series where I will be playing with remote tech but not with the time delay. And this is a little bit time accelerated deployment and great, the parachutes have fired and as you can see our rover has now been correctly positioned for the actual descent. Great, now it's time to actually land this sucker. surface coming closer and closer. This is by the way the first time I'm testing the airbag so I'm kind of hoping that they will do their job. Coming close and touchdown! Landed! Great! Looks like the rover looks intact. Awesome! And now I will be retracting the airbags and hope for the best. Let's see. Since, yeah, I, hereby I forgot that I'm once again playing with the actual <laughs> time delay and my antenna has not yet been extended. So I'm going a little bit time acceleration and Yes, now my antenna is extended and I have the connection to the satellite network, meaning that I now can send commands over the interface. Great, time to retract the actual airbags. I had them all, by the way, on the action group, but uh, I, when I tried the action group, something got uh, bugged up and I couldn't actually... Uh, retract them so that's why I'm now as you can see I'm retracting them manually and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that none of them got broken too bad by the way I find this airbag extremely useful and very very cool for dropping stuff that you cannot control on the surfaces looks really well okay do a little bit time acceleration and yes it they start to retract awesome last ones come on Fantastic! We have successfully deployed the rover on Duna. Uh, we have uh, a crap ton of experiments and now I'm just adjusting the camera. So, camera ID so we can view them from the probe control room. And I also start to do some experiments. Since we don't have a Kerbal we cannot drive it as yet. Due, due to the time delay, but uh, we can make some experiments and send them off to Kerbin. So far this has been a great success. I'm just queuing the experiments and Uh, for some of these experiments I'm using DMagic's Orbital Science mod. Um, if you are keen on science it has a lot of cool experiments and I cannot recommend it enough. Now since the biomes came in in 0 0.90 it makes the game much more enjoyable in my opinion. In this save I'm actually playing with uh, Sandbox but still I wanted to show you that even the experiments that you're doing are affected by the timing delay. So that's clearly something that you want to plan for. Ok. 
Okay, and uh, once that the last two um, experiments execute, we will probably just quickly pop by to the probe control room, see what it looks like from there, all with all the camera set up, and then we will be going, continuing to deploy the actual satellite. Uh, usually when I'm sending the craft on these missions, I to do tend to send rover and the satellite because I'm not assuming that we do have a com working satellite network in the orbit of the target planet. This makes communication a bit more difficult because you have to constantly keep in mind that you do have satellite over you while you're doing stuff. Otherwise, stuff may get bogged and you may lose control in the critical moment, which can be very, very unfortunate. Okay, and here you can see the flight director and you can see my cameras. Now I'm just... Um, I just showed it quickly because we still have a rover to deploy and we are already closing in on the 30 minute mark, which I'm trying to keep for the videos. So. Now, setting up the, um, extending the solar panels to make sure that we can actually decouple from the transfer stage, and then I will be fixing the orbit. Since this is a ScanSat satellite, uh, I will e ideally want to launch it into the polar orbit so that it can scan the whole planet for both resources and also anomalies and whatnot. So, decouple. First to get rid of this small uh, deorbit stage for the actual rover and extending the communitron because uh, it's easy to forget that you have the communitron on the transfer stage and if I was were to detach before I extended the communitron, my satellite would be a dead stick. So this is some of the most common rookie mistakes that people make. You have the antenna on your mother craft, but the moment you detach, you realize, oh, crap, I have forgot to deploy my antenna. Or I, even worse, I didn't take it. Which has happened to me more than on a single occasion, so more times than I could count, actually. So, yes, you have to be really, really careful about it. Okay, now we have separated from the transfer stage, activating the ion engine, and now preparing to fix the actual orbit. So, this will be a little bit time accelerated because you already saw me fixing the orbits when I was launching the DUNA communication network with the uh, SSTO Heimdall in the previous episode. Um, um, I will take the, this couple of minutes rather than uh, commentating to say this was probably almost the last uh, entry in the remote tech series. Um, at, at least for the guide, I will still cover um, the construction of a single satellite around Kerbin that can go to all, that can communicate with all the planets because I set it in the initial plan. And um, then I will probably uh, start a new save uh, in the 090. I'm still figuring out whether it will be the career mode or it will be the actual science mode because I find I've been watching a lot of people play career mode and contracts. Yeah, contracts are fun. They're easy to do. But in my opinion, the slow game a little bit too much for my liking because uh, I like to launch my network, I like, I like to go to Moon and Minmus to explore, but getting nailing every single contract is a little bit maybe too too slow paced for me. So I would like to go to other planets, Duna, Jewel and whatnot, uh, and maybe set up even bases and so and their funds might be a limiting factor. So I still haven't decided but I'll consider what should be done. Um, now I'm setting up queuing the command, sending uh, commands to the actual satellite to make sure that uh, that we get it to the polar orbit. 
and once we get there we will do the actual burn. Um, other than this remote tech guide I will be continuing making some videos in the Kerbal Space Program uh, in terms of maybe designing planes space planes because I found them the whole process of designing and not just flying SSTOs to be really really fun uh, let me know in the comments below if you're interested to see something like that and uh, yeah and also I will be continuing uh, the uh, Big Bang series not for too long but for a couple more episodes there are uh, some of them I already recorded and uh, Basically, I'm not just now working on commentaries and making sure to release them. By the way, B Big Bang is also based off the 0242, so I'm trying to phase them out and just focus on the 0 0.90 instead. Okay, we're now coming to the orbit and we will be doing our burn shortly. Let's see. All right, a little bit accelerated until I get to the point, and yeah, as you can see now, using the acceleration to just fix the orbit, and uh, since I'm doing a, a significant change my periapsis has temporarily gone down in the planet sphere of influence completely onto the planet but I have enough delta V and I have enough thrust to make sure that I actually turn it radially so yeah like I said in this series there will be one more at least one more video where I assemble this high-tech communication satellite and I, I, it will probably be video of me assembling it and probably launching it and how to do actually assign it. Yeah. Um, slowly coming into the actual orbit. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video and hit that subscribe button. If you like me playing the Kerbal Space Program, there will be a lot more content where that comes from. Uh, thank you very much for watching. This is Groundforks signing off.